Welcome, guys, to another edition of the Appalachia TCG podcast. Today, we're yeah. going to talk about grading and collecting yeah. cards. Just cards in general, not just Magic the Gathering, but just cards in general. Uh, I started collecting graded cards about a year ago. Oh, or two. So. Was it a year or two ago? About a year. About a, About a year. year or two ago. But uh, I'm your host, Big John or Smango, and my co-host here is Anthony Cardi, otherwise known as Tony. He don't have a nickname on YouTube yet, but whenever he gets his YouTube channel up and going, he'll, you guys that's a fan of this channel and this podcast can go follow him on there. But uh, I also want to say I finally gave away the Ostjar, uh the Ostjar Commander deck today. I finally done that. Oh, <laughs> finally done it. He actually he's messaged me right there on uh, Discord where to mail it to. That's what made me think of it. Anyway, we're talking about graded cards today, and if you should grade them, Magic the Gathering graded, Pokemon graded, sports cards graded. We're just going to talk about grading and uh, oh. collecting in general. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, where did I start? I, I've always been fascinated by graded cards, anyway. So. I'm trying to to narrow it down or make it simplify what a graded card really is. It, it's, I take it as it want to preserve the value. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'll try to articulate it the best I can. A graded card is the most perf well, what you want is the most perfected card. Like in that, like you want a card. Say you have a Charizard from. 19, what, when, when, 1999, you have a Charizard, base set one, shadow, whatever. What you're trying to get is the best card that's centered perfectly, the back centered perfectly, it ain't scratched, it ain't dinged, it ain't anything, and it will basically be a high grade. So, you, whenever you buy a graded card, you know that card's authentic. Yeah. You know that card's in tremendous shape because you had you sent it to a company, a, off, a third party company that looked over this card with, they got special glasses, probably software now, whatever. Yeah, it's a lot I got now. And you get the best card you can get. So just because I have a Gem Mint 10 Urza's Incubator doesn't mean there's not another Urza's Incubator in here borderless, but Will there be one that's in a Gym Mint 10? Probably not. Mm, not likely. I don't I don't know. You know, then Charizards it's, are it's probably more far and few in between. So there, there comes a reason a, a question, why would you want a graded card? Well, this is one hundred percent collecting. This is not playing, you don't play with these. I mean, I guess you can. Yeah. Like I can <laughs> I plan to play with my uh she ordered tin, pristine tin. Well, uh, as a as a uh, post Malone played with his one of one. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah. Well, you can play with them, but how would you play with that? He had to make a treasure token. Oh, okay. So he just said he just threw it on. <laughs> that uh, works too. Well, I guess technically you could play it. You, you could uh, you know make a proxy and write the card on there then. Yeah. Get it out and play with it, I guess. But these ain't really meant to be played with. No. They're yeah. these meant for collecting and investing or... This is more the investing side. This is, yeah, this is big, the investing and collector side of the trading card game world. And it is, like Tony said, begin a slippery slope. Yeah. You really need to know what you're looking for. And I've made tons of mistakes starting out. Um just getting cards graded or even learning about them. What in the world, what do you send in? Like, that's a big one. What do you send in if you want a card graded? Like you have a rare card, you know you have a rare card, but do you send it in to get graded? Is it worth the while? Is it worth your money? Cause it costs money. You don't get a free grade. They don't give you this stuff for free. Um, they usually cost, CGC is like, you have to pay shipping and shipping back. So you have to pay shipping there and shipping back. Um, so you have to make, you have to get your own box, you have to get your own top loaders, your own sleeves, your own packaging. You have to ship this. So you can use USPS or they like UPS. Um, another thing is 
if you want like, and there's a million grading services. We're gonna talk about that too, because I have just about all of them, I think. Yeah. What's well, our favorite? Besides the foreign stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have the foreign stuff. I have mostly all the most well-known grading yeah. companies. I've got everything about graded. I don't that, think there's, there's not one I, I've not I think, used. I think there's one. No, uh, you got mana, so it uses the green light or dragon eye. Dragon eye, yeah. yeah. So. so we'll talk about that too in this day's episode. Uh, but let's start off, what card do you send to get graded? So if you're talking about Magic the Gathering, that, uh, you know, beta and alpha manas, actually you can get graded, but like you yeah. don't want to get a 2024 basic land graded. Like you just, like no. you can get basic beta and alphas graded. And even then, like if you have a, a basic mountain, you could get that graded in alpha and beta and be worth a lot of money. Uh, but now, now why would you send in one you found? You have to look at it. Yeah. yeah well, you could have an error somehow. I mean, there's uh, miscuts uh, for Which your cheap. People stuff. do go after miscuts, though, so you have to watch for that. If you have a miscut, that could actually be a good thing. Yeah. They According don't. to who you sell, you have to find a seller for, or a buyer for those two, I guess. Okay. I guess you're the seller, but uh, you have to find a buyer for that. And that stuff. Uh, I would like to say that's probably a very niche niche, niche market. <laughs> very niche. Like, so if you get a, if you come around a, a alpha or beta basic land and it is in phenomenal shape, like you know, like it, you can't tell it has been. It ain't been marked on the sides. Everything's. Uh, centered, they call it something called centering. They have surface in the back. Like I made a mistake, is I wasn't looking at the back of cards either when I sent them. And I'd look at the front and be like, man, that Michael Jordan looks fantastic. And I'd be like, looking it over, looking it over. I forgot to look at the back, and it would be off center. And I'd get one back and be like, how's that off center? Um, even this one's cut weird, and they didn't even count that. And this is a ten. <laughs> Look at the back of it. It's like this side's longer. They, even these grading companies make yeah. mistakes, if you ask me. Ain't that side smaller than that one? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. a gem mint tin. But that don't have the... That don't have the... The other... It don't have the, the, subgrades. the, the subgrades. So there's a thing called subgrades, too, you can get on cards. Uh, but what do you send in? You send in the best card you think, you 100% think it's going good, good, great. Because the thing is, is you want a 9 or a 10. Yeah. If you get below a 9 or a 10, especially if it's a modern card, you might as well break it loose and it uh, charges as a raw card. But at least you know it's real. Yeah. That's about it. But now, I like to say, you know, like my one card, you know, I had you sent off yeah. for me. Uh, I just like that card. And... Uh, <laughs> I was willing to pay the money to do that. So, it's all what you like and what you don't like. Some people don't like the, the hard plastic slabs. Yeah, they don't. Um, some loves them. Oh. I love them. <laughs> oh, but it does feel special when you hold one. Yeah, it's like, oh man, this thing, I could throw it across the room and it'd be, probably be okay. Yeah. Like the card will be okay. Yeah. Uh, so the most important things in the grade is, well, it's it's the label. And right here's an SGC if you've never seen one of those. See, I told you I have about every one of them. So the most important thing in the grade is the label. Probably, probably just the label and the, well, the card itself. Because, the you know, the plastic don't mean nothing. It's the label because this is all. Yeah. It's authentic. You can look it up online. You can see it even shows them during the grading process, some of them. You, like this one, you know, this one don't have a QR code. Some of them have QR codes. The mana grading doesn't have a QR code, but it has a number that you can look up. Hopefully it'll focus there. Uh, maybe, there it goes, it focused a little bit. But anyway, it has a, a, a number right there. Uh, for you folks watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see that. But in the top left of the mana grading, they have a number and you can look that up on managrading.com. You can look it up, you can see that this card is authentic. Yeah. And uh, that's the big thing with comes to the high collectible cards is that you want the authenticity. Yeah. 
Well, you want to know what you're buying is real. Yeah. Because that's a big thing, and that's the one episode we need to talk about. It's fake carts. Uh, right. But this this kind of surpasses over this. It's like how, to, it's how you get over fake cards. If you want to know what you're buying, you get something that's authentic. I'd say a card shop, too, would probably be more than likely to buy something in a slab over a raw. Well, card shops normally are trained to look for stuff like that, too. So. Yeah. I mean, ever TCG has its own security uh, on their cards. <laughs> so here's an example of, I bought a Singer Vampire uh, on eBay and they shipped it, it was fine, but during shipping it got cracked. But the card's still fine. I mean, this is just a revised uh, Singer Vampire. I just always liked Singer Vampire. I thought it would be a cool card to collect. And the case is cracked all to pieces. Uh, I just kind of taped it back together and I could send it, you could send it back in and get it re, uh, re slabbed, re slabbed, but I think you can actually buy these slabs now, take it apart and just put the label in it. Uh, like I said, the label is the most important thing, which uh, another thing that people try to counterfeit is they'll buy the labels and just make it look like, so you have to worry, worry about that now too. Uh, but now you can, you can point them out too by the serial numbers and stuff because I say as soon as like uh, what the PSA uh, gets word somebody's using their labels they're gonna they probably won't be like no that ain't gonna work <laughs> I mean they got holographics on them and the PSA is great uh, for sports for sure and you have a uh, you know you have the QR code on the back and barcode you can scan both of those yeah, but yeah, when, when you find a card, I, I now I have a top loader uh, binder. binder that I have cards I want to get graded in now. Yeah. So I'm gonna put the cards, I know it's high value, cards I want to get graded in there and those will be the cards I send off. I made a mistake of like kind of just sending a bunch of my old Michael Jordans in and thinking like, oh, they're just old and they'll be all right. And or here's one in general. I collected, you probably remember this card. I had it forever. And I yeah. thought this card was in phenomenal shape. But uh, that card's basically worth nothing. Like if it would've come back a 10, it would've been worth a lot of money. Oh, that's a sticker, ain't it? Yeah, that's a stickums. Michael Jordan stickums. But apparently Michael Jordan was so popular and everybody wanted to collect the Michael Jordan back in the 90s. Like that card's basically worth nothing if it don't get a nine or 10. It's worth the overall value. I mean, it's not a bad. It's not in bad shape, and that's what I mean. It's so weird. Like you know, the card's not in bad shape. Like I've never this card's never been like tampered with or anything. Like uh, it stayed in a top loader its whole life, and in a penny sleeve, and it got a six. A six is uh, X mint. So I mean, it still means it's a good card. Uh, technically, it's still a good card, but it's not. You don't want. It's not going to bring a ten value ever. You don't want anything really under a five. What I've understood of the great world. I, I think it's nine or ten. Like you don't get a nine or ten. It's kind of you, your card. Like even this Michael Jordan, it's in great shape, but it got a seven. It's basically worthless. And it's according to how rare the card is too. Like Jordans, yeah. everybody grades Michael Jordans. Yeah. So maybe a grade Charizard from 1999, seven is still worth a lot of money compared to Michael Jordan from 1993, which yeah. got graded a billion times. It don't matter as much. So there's that, there, you know, you gotta count for that. I mean, it also depends where you're getting the grade done at. Yes. That is um, you know, it's kind of weird. Like if you hear of like the big top dog grade company, really it's Bakit or PSA, and a lot of generic companies under. But and I, I think they're all should be equal, to be truthful. Uh, I'd say PSA and Bakit get graded the most. Well, they're the ones uh, demands the most premium price on their. Yeah. On their grades. Well, I've always heard CGC grades harder than PSA. PSA yeah. is supposed to have kind of a lax grade. 
So Beckett's supposed to be like, so the way I understand it, there's Beckett that's like the hardest grade. Yeah. I think. CGC's in between Beckett and PSA, then PSA's below the CGC. Yeah. Well, I've always understood it. Now, there's other grading companies. Now, which one should you use? That's a big debate. I'm a fan of the PSA because of the red and white. The PSA one. does look great, but uh, it costs a lot more to get graded. Yeah, what, $24, $25? Yeah, it's $25. Yeah. And I'll talk about how you can get use PSA if you want to because... The thing is, when it comes to grades and these companies, they don't want you to just send in one, but there's ways around that. You have to send in a bulk if you do it yourself. Yeah, what is it, like 20? It's 10 or 20. I think it's 20. It might be 20 PSA. You have to send in a bulk to get graded. Like, you can't just send... But you also get a discount, too. Like, you're not paying the $24 on yeah. all of them. But like That's... I said, you gotta, you gotta take into account the shipping. Yeah. Your own box, your own shipping, you got to ship it back. And so that's a lot more weight coming back than what <laughs> went. That's more weight. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's do some simple math on the calculator. So if we got everything at 20, I mean, you got to look how much you're spending. 20 times 20, if you're getting the discount, that's $400. Yeah. Plus shipping and the wait time. Like another thing with PSA. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait time. The wait time on PSA, you could take up to a year. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you do it yourself. Yeah. It's ridiculous. You, you need to you need to know a card store is sending a massive order out, and they got rapid return price, you know, shipping back to them, and it's there's a lot to it. <laughs> but the wait, what was it like? 128 or 140 days to, to get the PSA back. My, uh, it was it took forever to get your. It, like, it took like like four or five months. Yeah, it took. Like even uh, so, I'll just go ahead and start what I do to send cards out to CGC or PSA. I use a website called COMC, and uh, that's checkoutmycollection.com. COMC. If you guys want to check it out. Uh, I do have a few sports cards still left on. I do have a lot of, I have a lot of uh, MTG cards on there. I haven't got, I think I have a few for sale, but uh, it'd probably be under Smango if it's on there. But the way that works is I ship my cards to them. They list them and you can buy them on COMC raw. You can buy, you, you can list them, sell cards on there raw, just like you would on eBay, but they do it. They take a fee out and it's, not a lot, but you know, learn. Somehow I have so many cards. It's like, if I wanted to sell them all, there ain't no way in the world I could do it by myself. So I started using that. But what drew me to COMC is if I wanted to get a grade of PSA, I could just ship one card. And where they ship a bunch of cards together, they track it. So they just put yours in with another bundle and you get graded. Yeah. And you don't, you pay like a dollar extra than I think you would if you'd done it yourself, maybe. But then you ain't paying $400 to get it graded, you know, no. for a bunch of cards. And you can just do that over time. That's what I've been doing. I mean, I, then also on COMC, you can buy a card and you could, as soon as you buy it, you can click send the grade. Yeah. Like you don't even have to have that card right now. You just click send the grade and I'll, I'll probably make a video on that eventually about getting graded on COMC. It's really easy. Like you can literally buy the card, you instantly have it. You go to your inventory, click send the grade. They have it processed in the send the grade after that. I mean, Facebook too. You can buy graded cards off of Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. And that's, and some of them are really cheap. I've seen them as low I'd as I'd be high. afraid of Marketplace. Facebook scares me when it buying stuff, especially if they ship it to you. I tried to buy a computer on there the other day and uh, I offered and they, they, uh, they didn't take the first offer, uh, offered again and they took it. Then I sent my money, and all of a sudden they it's they said something wrong went wrong with the thing, and the, like the whole thing's gone. I don't think I got charged, but it's like, what? <laughs> I can't even message the seller now. Uh, that's a little scary. Yeah, I don't know, Facebook, it's it's weird. I don't know. I ain't never bought anything that says ship to your house on Facebook yet. 
because of stuff like that. I was going to. I mean, uh, eBay's another good. Uh, eBay's eBay's good. eBay at least they have buyer protection. Yeah. I'd say Facebook does too now, but uh, eBay has buyer protection, which if you're a seller kind of sucks because I've been bit by it before, <laughs> and like nothing been wrong with that. I, I literally had. Uh, so selling on eBay, I haven't had many problems selling cards. One time I mixed up an order and they just shipped it back, which was whatever. That's my fault. But the, in this one instance, I was selling a retro uh, mini NES, oh. brand new. Whenever that's hot on the market too, like they just come out. Oh yeah, yeah. brand new. Stood a night at Best Buy and I decided to kind of flip it, and make some extra money because I was poor at the time. And I was like, uh, yeah, this would be cool. I'll sell it online and make, you know, make some money. Uh, you know, bad on me trying to make a dollar off somebody. But, you know, I, I stood in line, you know. They weren't out standing in line. So I figured I was getting paid to stand in line. <laughs> anyway, I wasn't trying to, you know, make a killing off of it. But uh, so I sell it and uh, the people message says it didn't work. It brand new. <laughs> Said they want their money back. And I was like, okay, ship it back. And they was like, uh, you got to ship, you got to give her money back first. And I accidentally clicked send money back. I said, okay, send me an item. I never did get it. And the, and I messaged eBay. I was like, what can I do here? I was like, I didn't mean to send them the money. I didn't get my item back. And I yeah. said it was brand new. And they were, like eBay was just like, oh, well. Yeah, uh, big so, companies like that. Lost out on that, then uh, that was just you know what sucked. I didn't even have a mini NES after that. Yeah, it's a uh, eBay. Uh, I think eBay's trying to get a little better on that stuff. But, but I mean, it was my fault too because I shouldn't have shipped the money back. But I was also trying to be like, okay, you know, you said it's not working. Here's you ship it back, and they wouldn't ship it back. And the thing is, they lived in Richmond, Kentucky, and I lived in Winchester. And uh, I thought it? about many times going to the doorstep because I had their address and be like, give them my NES. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably what I would have done. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to so bad. But I was like, I'm going to end up getting mad. Yeah. Sometimes, well, best to walk away and not get in trouble. Yeah. To, you know, just take your licks and go on. But well, That was a bad lick for me at the time. <laughs> it, was, it was a bad lick. But, uh, you know. Here I was trying to make a little extra money and got didn't have I end up having less than I started out with. Oh yeah, yeah well there's people want to take advantage of and there's there are people out there who want to take advantage of what they can do and what because you can do something don't mean that's what you should do. Yeah. <laughs> but that's you know it's uh it's bad. And I got worried when I was selling some cards on eBay of. People just saying, oh, I didn't get, didn't get it. That's a big one you got to worry about on eBay. I didn't get it. And it's like, so if you sell on eBay, you can do a... Uh, the track. You can do tracking under 20 bucks and ship it in an envelope. Yeah. But That's, uh, I always paid the extra, what, was like 20 cents yeah. for the, the shipping tracker. So that there, that is good that you do get that. I, well, you feel a little easier about it, but the fees of selling on eBay, too, will gut you. Mm-hmm. Like, I sold a $20 card, and I think I broke even on, like, 10 bucks. Yeah. You know, after eBay got done with their fees, so. I haven't been selling on eBay as much, uh, but, of course, I've not been opening as many packs of cards, either. And I've not really hit anything that's been a game buster that I wanted to sell. Well, you know, I, I've been buying more than I've been selling lately. Uh, but yeah, I, there's some of these grades in here I wouldn't care to give away sometime, maybe at an event. Uh, yeah. One of our magic events or something would be good to give away. Yeah. Just for a prize, because uh, they're lower grades. They don't really, I, you know, I give them to my family members, you know, the younger younger kids get them involved in cars, and they all, you know, they got a well, that'd be graded special. six. <laughs> that, that'd be special to a little kid. Yeah, yeah, they think it's card. awesome. I went nuts if I had a slab card back in the day because I only, when did they start grading cards? It had to been. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know. I don't know when they started grading cards. Uh, 
I know they always, you can get graded coins. I'd say PSA was first, right? That or Beckett. It had to be one of the two. I know Beckett was grading coins in the 90s. Let's see, when, golly, PSA was lost in 1991. Oh. Uh, Hall, David Hall, owner of the coin grading company. So he owned Professional Coin Grading Services, PCGS. So it started from coins and he started PSA. So I figured PSA was the first one. Yeah. And Beckett's around So there even when you Google, it says CGC, PSA, Beckett, SGC. So that's, I guess, technically the big four. I don't, I don't like SGC. I have an SGC card. It looks like it's in some kind of phone to me. Where did it go? There, there's SGC. I mean, it don't look bad. And if you guys are on YouTube watching or whatever you're watching, that's SGC. Uh, it's just a Pokemon card. It's nothing special. It's mirror. No, it's like from. It's a newer one too. I just I, you know I just wanted one to like compare the differences. And these, I mean, it even has a sports logo on the back. Like, it's not even meant for... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, PSA is technically professional sports authentication, I think. I think. Because it started out as a sports grading, because, you know, trading cards wasn't a thing in 1991. No, uh, 93. Well, they... I mean, trading cards was a thing, but not they, collectible they, card games. Was like, like, Magic wasn't a thing, or uh, Pokemon. That was 93 was Magic. And Pokemon was 99, and Yu-Gi-Oh! was 2001. I think so. I might be wrong on Yu-Gi-Oh!, but that sounds right to me. It does. Maybe. But, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Um, but sports cards has always been around. Yeah, sports cards has been around. Like the, That's why it was called PSA. Like, and, and there's been a lot of... I mean, Magic wasn't the first card game. I thought it or, was. No, there was others, but they didn't. They didn't make it. Well, like a, PSA stands for Professional Sports Authenticator. So I wonder, I don't know when they opened up to collectible card games like Magic and Pokemon and stuff, but PSA was first. Beckett, Beckett come out in the 90s, like as a magazine. Yeah. For us to start seeing where our cards. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, uh, that's a good topic right there. That is a good topic. Because, you know, them magazines only come down, what, maybe once a month? Yeah. Or every six months of, uh, in between? Well, I think there's a movie, and they said that it was all just fabricated. Like, they didn't know how much the card was actually worth. They but, just put it on there. But, that, you know, the prices didn't change. And now, yeah. you can watch it. like uh, It's like stock market. Yeah, it goes just, up and down. Uh, I mean, it goes up. There's people tracking the value of these cards now. Yeah, there's um, apps daily. and stuff. But yeah, Beckett come out and they had a magazine. It was a big deal. Like, it was cool. It had, like, you know, Mike George, Shaquille O'Neal and stuff on there. And they'd talk about all these cards. And uh, you'd always, want, we'd open up a pack of cards. We'd hit, like, a Shaquille O'Neal, Michael Jordan. We'd look at it all day. This top, it'd have tops and upper deck listed in there. And you'd be like, oh, this card's worth $3 or something like that. Oh yeah! All fabricated BS. I think could come out in the documentary year. So somebody said it was all fabricated, just made up baloney. How much these cards were? Well, I remember when because the the, the cards in the nineties. Now see, the old cards are probably worth that much, but these cards in the nineties, they <laughs> print mass printed the crap out of them. It's called the wax or uh, yeah or, or junk wax or because they just. <laughs> but I remember Wesley, my little cousin, he pulled a first edition Charizard. And he got, we looked it up in this that Beckett book, and it said $300. And I mean, I, I said, there wasn't no doubt in mind people was giving $300 for them. Probably. But I don't know. That, that's a good topic, though, is Beckett in the card back then. But that was the chase card of the Pokemon world. Yeah, Charizard, Charizard still is a chase card, and even in the modern yeah. sets. Like, I think I have a few. No, I ain't got no new Charizards, I don't think. No. I have the 25th anniversary of the reprint, which is kind of neat, Charizard. I mean, uh, now... I, I I opened up several Pokemon packs and 
back in the day, and I just could not hit one. <laughs> <laughs> I never did open it. I never did have Pokemon cards back then. Yeah. There it is. I opened up a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh packs too, and I did hit a good. One day I just got bored and I went to Walmart and they didn't have no magic cards. So I was like, hey, I'll open up a Yu-Gi-Oh pack. And ended up hitting like a fifty-dollar card. I sold it on eBay though. But um, but, I tell you what, now Yu-Gi-Oh is just right there expensive with uh, you know magic in general too. So you put money into these games, so. I mean, on the, the the point of your collection, I would get a lot of it graded if you can financially afford that. Cause that's just saving, that's helping you in the long run. All right, we're gonna talk about, uh, I'm gonna give Tony five just different grading companies and you can talk about which one, which slab you like the best. And I'll talk about, I mean, I'll talk about which ones I like the best, too. Uh, and which ones I prefer using now if I'm shipping in a set. So I'll, I'll go first because, you know, these these are mine. I'm little, Well, here's Becky. You probably don't want to look at it, too. So you've got six. He's got six. i got six different grading companies I've used. All different labels, all different slabs. They all kind of look similar a little bit. Uh... My favorite for collectible cards is actually CGC. And I don't really know why I have a bunch, like, like the sports cards don't look as good in them. But I don't know if it's Pokemon, but they used to have the blue label too. And people love the blue. I like the black label a lot better. And they started grading sports cards too. So I started using them and you'll see, I got a Shaq here graded. It's only got a 7.5, unfortunately. Uh, but that's one of my favorites is, uh, CGC, and of course PSA, the red label's pretty cool. But like I said, it costs a lot. It's like, it's almost not worth it to me to get like your own personal card graded. Now, if you guys are familiar with me and Tony, we like, uh, you know, we like Alpha Investments and Rudy and stuff. We think he's hilarious. Uh, he talks about investing in cards. He's got that, like the craziest, that, craziest collection of all time. <laughs> that's the PC. G. Yeah, that's PCG. Yeah. PCG is Rudy Alpha Investment. He actually owns it now, or part sixty-nine percent of it or something. I don't and know. this is metal. This yeah. metal label. So uh, this is definitely if I'm sending in cards and I do it myself, I go PCG. Uh, and the car, the the labels, the metal labels, the everything looks great on them. Like they're thick. I don't know, you. it would be hard to crack that thing. You'd have to really, really try to crack that thing. Um, PSA, of course, looks great with sports cards. And they've always been, they, they, so if you're looking for a value, kind of what CGC, PCG, probably all go on is the PSA value. Cause yeah. they're get graded a lot more PSA, I think. Yeah, um, PSA is top. Now, Tony's going to disagree with me on the mana grading. So what mana <laughs> grading is, I think the card, like the the labels and stuff look great. And it, it looks familiar to, uh, I mean, it looks just like the PSA PSA slab, it, uh, like identical. Let me open this one up. I, I haven't opened a lot of the plastic up off of the mana grading. I'll open one here. Well, I mean, if you want your cards back in a time crunch way. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about that, too. But like. These almost fit together, the, this PSA and uh, mana. mana grading. But mana grading, we'll put them side by side here. You got mana grading. I got this Mega Man graded. So what mana grading is, it's not graded by a human. It's graded by software AI, AI, AI. called Dragon Eye. Yeah. And if you look at one of my previous videos on this channel, I talk about mana grading and go through it. And it doesn't really make a lot of sense, some of the grades, to me. like. You can look it up and they'll tell you why it just, but it did open my eyes up a lot to what a human would look for too. Yeah. Cause you know, a human had to program the AI to look for certain things. And I'm telling you right now, I cannot find a thing wrong with this Mega Man card and it got a 6.5. It says centering's 10, edges 6.5, corners 9.5, surface six. So what's the difference between edges and corners? I have no idea but then it looks phenomenal, so I, I don't know. Well, I prefer getting a human to do it. 
uh, I like PCG, like I said, great, like sending them in. I think the slabs are beautiful, the metal is beautiful. Metal, uh, and, and it comes with subgrades and don't cost a lot either. I think it's like $18 a card. Yeah. Then if you use like the promo code tacos, <laughs> you get an extra off of it. You oh. get a free graded card, I think. Oh, off of uh, uh, PCG, PCG. Yeah. yeah. So that's probably what I'm gonna do from now on if I get my own cards graded. Well, I mean. And I'll let Tony, Tony take it from here and he, he'll go over what he likes the best. Well, what I'm seeing here right now, I mean, yeah. Uh, I like the the mana and the PSA. Probably them my favorite um, out of the field because they just feel about similar. PSA does feel lighter out of all of them, I think. But uh, and then old Rudy's card grading deal is I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of swayed with the metal label. <laughs> <laughs> the metal label is awesome. I mean, they just seem now, just like. I didn't talk about Beckett or SGC. I've not, I've bought those just so I'd have them. I've not actually used them before to get graded. I don't like the SGC look. It looks like it's like in a thing of foam, but, but it looks cool in the background. So don't get me wrong there. Like black and cards look cool. So Beckett, uh, Beckett looks good too though. So the PCG and the CGC, I would actually like them probably my second choices. Uh, Cause they just, these would be my first choice and this is my second. Now CGC, they grade a lot of Pokemon cards. Yeah. A lot of Pokemon cards. But now, I really hate to say it, but the Beckett and what's that? And the S SGC. Uh, I'm not really a fan of their cases. I don't like the Beckett cases. I really don't. They're thick. I'm just, I've been looking at um, binders off of, uh, uh, well, they're not binders. They're like a folder, but they're off of, uh, what did I got back? Oh, <laughs> what, what's the name? It's uh, Ultra Pro. Yeah. And they make it, and a lot of them fits in the P PSA. So if you get a similar case shape and size, it's gonna fit. But these two right here wouldn't fit. But I think which PCG's thick too. Yeah, but I say. But PCG, uh, uh, the time to get it back was almost as quick as the mana grading. The mana grading was a flat like month, and it comes in a cool box. And like I said, if you're interested in mana grading, I got a video of them already. Uh, I think if you just want to get something graded and you're not wanting to jump through another middle company yeah. to do it, um, that's what a lot. And they grade Naruto cards. Oh, they do? Yeah. So, uh, I, I'm... I, I like PCG. Like, that's probably who I'll use for the majority of my Magic cards because I think it helps that Rudy is a part of the owner of it now. And he's the one that said you don't want to get anything below a nine or ten anyway in grades. Yeah, but he, he really ought, his whole channel is more fi finance. Uh, yeah, finance and investment. Yeah. Oh, that's really. I mean, you can have a raw collection. Yeah, raw collections are fine, guy. I ain't knocking raw collections. Um, but you raw know, collections, I think uh, I got you know are meant to be played with. Uh, I think um, in a way. Well, uh, but you know, it's collecting like NES games. I have NES games. I have no plans ever playing them. So I just get them graded or something. I guess you can't graded, get graded raw cartridges. No, uh, I don't. Maybe. <laughs> but they just sit over there. It's not like I'm playing them or anything. They just look cool on a shelf. I mean, I, I tell you, cool thing I want to get is some graded VHSs. Graded VHSs? That, that just seems like. <laughs> Ideal. I just does. I'd say I wonder if Wada does that. I haven't got any graded video games now, guys, so I can't talk on that. I know a little bit about it. Uh, but mostly if you get graded video games, you want to get them sealed because... Yeah, you don't want them open. Yeah, I don't... I don't they, they might do the boxes. I, I don't know. But uh, comics, that's another... Comics one. is a big one, and I'm wanting to get into that. But, whew... <laughs> I, I've looked. I've looked. And They're cool. I like them Magic Together in comics. I got on eBay. I found, I think, like the whole set of that one for like $18. Really? The whole set? Yeah. I was like, huh, I know what I'm going to have to buy. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll have to get the whole set too, just to complete a set. Well, Be cool if they come with the cards. I found a non open. It was still uh, strand wrapped. Really? On there. It was like uh, $10. Really? I want to have to buy and it. Just it, open it on. It video. should uh, have a Fallen Empire. Fallen Empire? That'd be cool. It probably, they, I, I'm sure they didn't put the good cards in there, but. No, I. <laughs> I'm sure they probably put a decent card in there, but not one that's worth a lot of money. Well, Fallen Empire really didn't, but it's, uh, I think they only had eight cards in a pack. Fallen Is Empire, it? yeah, I think so. And uh, it was really, well, it was like that subset they done last year with March of the Machine, mm -hmm. or March of the Machine Aftermath. They uh, had five card packs, and and you know the community just rejected it <laughs> it's like no we don't want that <laughs> and they was about what a hundred dollars when they first the falling uh, bars no uh, the booster box for that march of aftermath oh it would come out uh, blazing uh, and it just died yeah march of the machines aftermath well i think it went back up now well, yeah, a little I, bit it's like four like 40, 40 you know what you remember when we when i first started buying a box and the first box i bought was that uh dozen of dragons oh yeah at page three and it was really cheap and i was like why is this so cheap now it's like 150 dollars a box now yeah it went up well there uh, a lot of people started using them dungeon cards yep so you know you uh, never know guys i i do want to start collecting some boxes yeah and just keeping them just cause but uh i've been looking at for the last couple of days just the lightning boat all the lightning bolts and that's gonna get expensive real fast so uh i don't know if there's much else to talk about the grading uh like i said we'll go over it again like if there's a certain card you think it's like the best card you got in your collection it's rare if it's worth I, I wouldn't even grade a five dollar card really like if it's over 50 maybe well unless you're one like if you pull that that one card you just love and it could be worth 10 cents if you're like it that good it, it yeah, ain't gonna sell if but you like it i mean that, that's the best you ain't gonna get no better protection than a graded card no so if there's a card you absolutely love it's your favorite card get it graded i've seen uh i where I, we we play popper a lot i've been looking and you know i like to take that uh you know chart and scroll back in a couple of years, you know, there one card might be worth like ten cents. Oh yeah, there. and then it just all of a sudden it jumps up to like five dollars. That MTG Goldfish, it has a, a popper tracker. Yeah, like cards yeah. that's changing. Yeah, thing, it's, which is, it's that's a whole different thing. <laughs> and uh, you know, some it might uh, that said it prints in might not be that good, and uh, no other cards working good with it, but five sets down the road it might have another card to say Ooh. oh yeah like the thunders uh outlaws of thunder junction just come out and so it has new popper card new common cards i've not even seen yet yeah so it's on telling what's good now i like uh, that mtg uh goldfish and and i've been just looking at some of the common cards because you know i just like clicking common yeah. and uncommon it, where i'm not getting overwhelmed with it and yeah you got more I, I ain't even looked at it i've barely played it i played a little bit on arena and then they got some cool red cards on there i've played with now because it's, it's easy to grind red i always think you just click click go on red <laughs> yeah but now uh, there's some wild cards is printed in the common slot this time is like why would they do that? Because, like, Popper is not... The a, power creep in Magic the Gathering is real. Yeah. I mean, well, Popper ain't a uh, weak format anyway. No, I keep telling people that, and they don't believe me. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, they do not believe they, me. Yeah, they say, oh, that's a sucky format. I'm like, dude, you get, you get all the common cards of every set. Like, yeah. You can build something really good. And, and it don't, just don't cost a lot. It's like 15 bucks. Oh, well, it could come down in uh, Alpha as a rare. Yeah. And now It'd over... It'd be some, printed as a common. Yeah. Over the time, and it, it's like it's... That's not a balanced yeah. format. Because <laughs> Popper it's, can go crazy real it, fast. It can get out of hand quick. 
And uh, it just, uh, it's just mind blowing what what it really is. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that just, but I, I mean, get what I mean. It's your money, you know. You buy what you want to buy, you know. That's. I mean, I like flying boats and get looking at it. You know, it, it costs about probably eight nine hundred dollars easy without the secret layer stuff involved. Just all the prints <laughs> of the yeah. Yeah, it was an actual, actual set. Uh, then you, you need to get them, and you need to get them graded. Then you have a whole graded set. <laughs> I think I That's counted. 20 bucks a card. <laughs> I think I counted. They're like uh, 20 so far. So that's $400 extra. Dollars that's just, $400 just, just to just, grade just, them. Yeah. And then when you're talking about Alpha. Alpha. That's crazy. It's a seven hundred. I do need. I need to get an alpha graded card just to have one. But golly, <laughs> and that Judge Promo uh, light boat is five hundred dollars. Yeah, it's, a, it's like well, it's like four fifty or five hundred dollars. So out of them two, that's over twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> it's just crazy. So I'll end my take on graded cards. This because we're running out of battery. No, our battery's okay. I think our. Uh... <laughs> our wireless receiver is running low uh should you get your cards graded or it's kind of the same thing as like if there's a specific card you want in a 10 what's the likelihood you're going to get a 10 it's very slim i will tell you right now very hard to hit a 10 regardless of what you use especially if you use beckett i don't know if they have a 10 do they that's all 9.5s i think there's one graded Charizard, that's a 10 in three. existence. There's three now? No, is it three. Beckett? Well, one dude owns two. Yeah, is, all, is it both and Beckett? Then, I know there's one Beckett for sure. But there's three Becketts. Three Becketts? The one dude owns two of the Becketts, and uh, uh, Logan Paul owns the third. Okay. And he bought a 10 PSA off of the dude who owns the two. Okay. I know and, he owns a lot of them. That, I know who you're talking about, but... It is extremely hard to hit a 10. And I wish I would have brought this up in a previous episode about buying, uh, if you should buy a booster box or not. And I remember thinking, I, I love that Kamig uh, Kamigawi set because of uh, uh, Reinforced Ronin. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I had the idea. I was like, man, I'll just buy a box and uh, surely the goodness I'll hit four of them, my play set of Reinforced Ronin. It's just an uncommon. I think I, I don't even. I think I hit one out of the whole box. That's an uncommon. Well, so that even though that car's not worth a lot, it is still an uncommon. And so hitting a ten, it's just it's hard to do. It's it, it's rare. You know what I'm saying? You don't hit the rare card all the time. Yeah, I mean you you're not guaranteed nothing out of them boxes. So, like I said. If there's a special card out there you're wanting graded in a 10, it's almost better just go ahead and buy it. You yeah. know what it's worth. It's not like it's going to go down in value. I mean, it can. It can go down in value like anything else, but at least you know what you got. It's already graded. You got it. You ain't got to worry about it. Uh, well, but it's fun sending in your cards to get graded and set to come back to. It's almost like ripping yeah, booster well, packs. So. I mean, I will... Like I sent in a, a Kobe Bryant rookie card uh, I got from the stockyard. Was not thinking it was going to hit a good grade. I was like, I, that's just cool. I just want a cool Kobe Bryant rookie card that come back a 10, which was a fantastic win overall. Yeah. I wasn't expecting to hit a 10. I was just wanting the card to be graded because I was like, I want a graded Kobe Bryant rookie card. Got lucky and hit a 10. Very lucky and hit a 10 because it's not like I, there's much Kobe Bryant rookie card laying around here. Now, in my opinion, should somebody want the grade? Yes, I mean, if you want to go down that road, that's an investment at that moment in time. You know, the, this hobby is expensive all the way around. There's no, no cheap, there's no cheap way around this. Uh -uh. I mean, they're, they're just not. Uh, graded's even above like the raw. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a step above. It's uh, crazy. Well, that's because you're you know you're paying premium for yeah the most in. You know, most perfect card you can, basically. So and, you can collect it. You don't play with it. You collect it. It sits there. Yeah, and then I think you're raw. There's only one. I mean, like, if we're talking about collections, there's really three types of collectors out there. You got your sealed collectors. 
Uh, they're just buying product, not opening it, and uh, they're sitting on it. Mm -hmm. And that's more of the investment side too. And then you got your graded people. That's all investment, really. And you got your raw and bulk collectors, and there's more your players. And uh, it, it's kind of wild you sit and think about that. Uh, what's out there in the the markets and uh with this and but graded cards i just like how they feel i like how they look so you know i go i'm pretty well any of my secret layers i get i'm gonna probably send off and get graded yeah that's what i done with these uh um, baseball planeswalkers i was like i can get those graded. those are awesome yeah i need to send mine off and i need to send my princess bride Oh. I've been getting the Princess Bride done here and there on COMC. They have all of mine. Some of them's already come back. Some of them didn't get a good grade already. Uh, <sighs> and uh, I got to open my Fallout secret layer. I got four packs sitting over there. I haven't even opened them yet. <laughs> uh, but I'm trying to. Make, I'm going to try to make a good video about Fallout and those cards. It, probably tonight. Sometime I might open them, but I plan to make a good video here on the channel. Yeah, I uh, mean. But it's all it's all question about do you like the the card you're wanting good enough? I mean, I've heard of people just collecting full art lands. Yeah, they will. And uh, so you know they try to get a, one of each one is ever printed. I mean, I like goblins. You know, goblins is my favorite. Uh, creature in magic mm -hmm. so uh, i just every time i see a goblin i'm like <laughs> i want that i mean it's just like i don't need it but i want it yep. <laughs> so it, it's really what you like what you dislike I mean, so i don't think there's really a definitive answer on graded should you grade or you shouldn't grade i mean i really don't think there's so, I'm gonna say that. I will think that sports cards are probably bigger when it comes to graded cards. Yeah, I Because they've just been around for so long. They've been graded baseball cards since 1991. Yeah. Well, you know, that's. And the baseball cards have been around since the, what, 50s? 40s? No, tw 20s? 20s? When was Babe Ruth? Hey. What's that? What's the <laughs> I got a Babe Ruth reprint somewhere. Well, the, you know, a lot of the sports cards, too, come out of backer packs. Yeah, bubble gum. Bubble gum. Uh, I remember getting a few baseball cards out of uh, Tony's Pizza. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I you mean those are awesome. And, you know, you imagine getting one of them graded and it actually come back to 10 being in a freezer. Let's see. But, yeah, Babe Ruth. Played uh, Boston 1914. So, right. shoot, baseball's been around forever. So, I uh, now when did a card come out? I don't know. So, this reprint was made in 1991. 75 years ago, world champs. <laughs> so. Boston Red Sox. I mean, it's wild. You know, you really look at. Man, them cards don't look nothing like what is out on the market now mm -mm. and uh now uh, the sports cards is in a big direction too the serializing cards they actually got smart and uh yeah they started serializing cards and they don't print as much either and they like uh, they used to uh, uh, that's a big thing even with magic like yeah. they're it's a, it, it's in this weird era where like they're trying to print the crap out of cards and make it affordable for people but then the collectors, because it's a collectible card game, you know, then all of a sudden their cards ain't worth as much. Well, so you got, there's those double-edged swords all these card companies are trying I, to play. I think Magic is fixing uh, that with the serialized cards, because now the true, pretty well investors and the collectors out there is gonna say, I need a serialize. Yeah. Over a, uh, Raw, you know, card. Or raw card or uh or something i just want to throw in a deck and it's gonna get beat up shuffled yeah and uh 
I think magic is actually on the path to fix well, that. The older the card is, the more it needs to be graded because that card's never going to be around again. No, no, that's like Time Walk. Yeah. You know, I would have to say Time Walk out of the Power Nine's my favorite. I mean, if money was cool no, art. if money was no object for me, I'd buy a Time Walk right now. <laughs> That'd be cool. I'd buy one too. And with that, I don't really know if I would buy a Black Lotus if even if I had the money. Cause, That's way too much for a Black Lotus. But uh, time off yeah. expensive too. But yeah. But uh, I think the art and everything. And what is it? It's had what three or four printings. Uh, Black Lotus or time off? Uh, well, all the pair nine. Three, so, three, right? It was alpha, beta, then. Didn't what? they do something Your where uh, there's a bird can put them in your deck and you can play your? Or something. I think that's only a digital thing, ain't it? Well, yeah, that might, I've not seen the card on it in I person. think it's only a digital, I think that's a digital thing. Well, if that's the case, it's only been printed three times. I think they've only been printed three times, Not, but the collector's editions, I think that's what, five? Yeah. Five times if you count those? I don't know. I don't know. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> yes, because... <laughs> Uh, I get confused with that stuff, you know, because there's really it's confusing. there's really no uh, concrete proof of that stuff. And I've not found that card, and it's on Arena. I mean, I've I done that. Uh, I built a deck just with it on Arena to play with. I yep. think it's in Sorcery or or what's that format called on there? Oh, uh, Alchemy. 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 I told. You, I think it's only a digital card game thing. Alchemy is the digital arena game. Like, there's cards in Alchemy yeah. that they change on the fly. Like, if a card's too powerful, yeah, they'll ban it, then they'll keep it in Alchemy and change the wording on it or something, and then still play with it. Oh, well, okay. it, it, it Alchemy. And I, this is a good topic for another video. But Alchemy is basically the response to Hearthstone. I think. Yeah. Like they, they like alchemy is one hundred percent digital. Like you can't get those cards in physical or online. Magic online. It's alchemy is its own thing. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I, that might be where thing. I'm getting confused at. It, it is confusing if you start playing arena, and you'll notice alchemy has a different logo that you don't see on physical cards either. But you know, I, it has like a big A or something on the oh, middle okay. right of it. Okay. okay. Yeah. So alchemy's all digital it, it like they change the wording on cards and everything like well, they, they can do that whenever they want because it's a, it's its own well format. that makes it confusing for everybody it else is too. so it's um, confusing i don't i didn't i don't really understand that yeah, it's opinion. its own basically it's a think of it as a magic format that's only on arena oh okay well, <laughs> That's it. That's basically it. But they can change the cards whenever they want because it's digital. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So if they think a card needs buff, they can just do it because it's the digital card game. I thought it was cool on Arena just play with the Power Nine. Yeah. Uh, they was pull. Full yeah, that, I'm, that bird. I think that bird's only on Alchemy. So I think that, I think that was their thing a way to get the Power Nines on the game, too. Well, that's fun to play. cast a Black Lotus or a Time Walk <laughs> or yeah, uh, Ancestral Recall or. Time Twister. Now that is a busted card. Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, Time Twister is. Getting to go again is big. Yeah, but you, but now you can do that now with modern cards. Yeah. You can take a turn from somebody else. Yeah. Well, guys, I, I think we'll try to wrap it up here. Uh, yeah. If you've watched this long, this whole episode, or listened on podcast, uh, Thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. If you leave a comment and let us know how we're doing or topics you'd want us to talk about. Yeah, give us some advice on what you want to hear about. Uh, what other team. kind of giveaway would you want me to do on my channel, the Smango channel? Uh, I might do some uh, graded cards, you know, lower grade cards giveaway. That'd be fun to do. Of course, I want to do some more Commander decks giveaway uh, eventually. But if I do that, I want more than uh, 400 views on a video. <laughs> Yeah. But that, already, that note had already been sleeved and everything, so that's like a that's at least like a fifty or sixty dollar value, and I'm gonna have to ship it out. Looks like uh, Squiggy, what is his name? Siggy, Siggy something. Yeah, Siggy the Hopper too was in my winter, and uh, he's from Germany, so I don't even know how shipping is gonna work with that. Uh, <laughs> well, that we'll get it to you somehow, Siggy. 
Uh, That's pretty cool, uh, international shipping. Yeah. Uh, I get it to him somehow because, you know, uh, he did win. Uh, I hope you guys watched that video too. But let us know how we're doing. If you enjoy this format, I, I love it. I love just talking with Tony I, anyway. So we just sit here and talk about magic. As I kind of like fun. a. <laughs> I just think it's fun. Give, give us a topic to talk about. We can just keep talking about it. But uh, yeah. I, be I, sure to subscribe if you ain't subscribed here. It's going to be on Spotify, Apple, all podcast directories. If you list, like just want to hear us blab. Uh, uh, but the big channel we want to grow is the YouTube channel. Mine, then Tony eventually, like I said, he's going to make his own. Yeah. So uh, I'm in the, we, this is our collaboration. So I'm in the process of moving and getting a spot where I could do YouTube. So yeah. So when Tony gets that rolling, we'll uh, be I, sure shouting out his channel too, and he'll be on here, and maybe I'm going his channel too, and yeah, we'll do cool stuff like that. But we're always going to try to do the podcast together. So yeah. Uh, and then we got our, uh, you know, Appalachia TCG group. Yeah. And that we're trying to grow. So visit our website, www.appalachiatcg.com. Hopefully here in about the next two, three months, I'll probably be able to start going back regular. Yeah. That's the thing right now. I got baseball and he's moving. So, uh. Well, yeah, we just we, uh, uh, closed on a house. So. <laughs> There's a lot to do before the summer begins. Uh. Sure, I'll be helping Tony move when I get a chance when he's actually getting ready to move in. Yeah, when, and, when uh, uh, the keys get handed to us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be doing that, and I got baseball until oh, the end of May, I'd say. I didn't mean the round, but I did. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, as soon as that gets back, we'll be back at the library or somewhere. Yeah, and I just playing love, some in person magic. I just love getting together, playing with people, and, and sitting and watching people, what they're got in their head they're playing yeah so you know people just get different. crazy out there so it's fun <laughs> well guys we hope you enjoyed this episode uh what is this three episode three, three? yeah okay, we've done three episodes now this uh, has been fun uh, i think yeah. it's uh, been fun all three i hope oh. you guys enjoyed this uh i know i love doing it tony loves doing it so hopefully you guys are enjoying it be big fans. We need more fans. Sure. Yeah. Just hear us ramble on. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we appreciate you. And if that's it, we're out. <laughs> Have a good one.